In this video, we will create a very nice analog clock using the Pygame library and see how to make a digital clock along the way. So, in addition to the Pygame library, today we need the datetime module with which we will receive information about the time. And first we will implement the framework of our application, that is, we will create a standard template for Pygame, at the moment I want to show how to display a clock with a digital dial, and therefore for this clock we will select and set the font. In the main loop, we will implement a check for closing the application, we will also paint the work surface black, but then we will create an instance of the datetime class and get information about the time and store it in the variable t. Now we will render the font using format types for time objects, and here we will select the color of the font and its background color, then we will determine the coordinates of the location of the clock on the screen, update the surface and set the required number of frames per second. Well, it turned out to be quite simple to create a digital clock, but to make a mechanical clock dial, you need to think a little. If we consider the hour hand, it is obvious that the angle between the numbers will be equal to 30 degrees, and for the minute and second hands, 6 degrees each. Let's move the digital clock to the upper left corner and form two dictionaries for the hour and other hands. For these dictionaries, each value on the dial will be a key, and the value of this key will be the angle by which the arrow must be rotated from the initial position. And now it is important to figure out how to turn the clock hand, Let's consider the rotation of the segment by some angle alpha, we need to determine the coordinates of the end of the segment, so we always know the position of the starting point in the length of the segment, and if, according to the above image, we write the cosine and sine functions for the alpha angle, then it becomes obvious how to determine the coordinates of the desired point. And then you need to set the radius for the clock hands, their initial position will be in the middle of the screen, and you also need to import the mathematical module math. And now we will write a function to determine the coordinates of the rotation of the clock hands, this function takes one of our dictionaries as well as the type of the clock hand, so we will use the above mathematics here, but there is one moment for the time count to start at the top, you need to subtract 90 degrees, otherwise the clock will lie on right side. And at the moment we don't have anything now, we need values for hours, minutes and seconds, they can be easily obtained from the created date time object, and here for the hour variable we take the remainder of dividing by 12, as we will do standard clock, as a dial we will draw a filled circle that will be placed in the center of the screen. Well, for now, on such a dial, we will begin to place the hands of the clock and let's first display the second hand. To do this, draw a line from the center of the screen to the coordinates that our function calculates, look at the result and you can see that the seconds are starting to count, while you can make sure that the readings on the digital clock are correct. Thus, we got a very correct and working mechanism of the clock, what now we need to add the rest of the attributes inherent in the watch, on ordinary watches the hands are usually different in size and for this we will define a dictionary where the key is the name of the watch hands and the value is the size of the hands. And also the choice of the size of the radius will take place in our function, and it is obvious that we will draw the rest of the lines in the same way, while I build each line of a different width, for the hour hand it will be the widest and the rest will be in descending order. And let's evaluate the result, so comparing the readings with a digital clock, we are once again convinced that the analog clock works correctly, but without pointers on the dial it is sometimes difficult to accurately determine the time, so let's implement them too. Then in the initial dictionary we will define one more distance at which the pointers will be located, then we will go through the dictionary for 60 intervals, the pointers themselves will be circles of different radii, so in one ternary operator we will define a large radius for those keys that are both multiples of 3 and 5, a smaller radius will be for those that are a multiple of only 5, and the smallest radius will be for the rest of the values. And in just a few lines of code, we got full-fledged timestamps on the dial. And now you can determine the time quite accurately, but suddenly I discovered a drawback, our hour hand should now be between 10 and 11. And without thinking twice, I rewrote the definition of the number of hours due to the minutes passed, that is, now we do not need a dictionary for 12 hours and one dictionary is enough for 60 timestamps. Thus, this shortcoming was quickly eliminated and now we see the time on the dial as we are used to seeing it on analog watches, and by and large our watches are quite ready, it remains only to give them a little colorful look. At first, it occurred to me to draw an indicator along the circle that displays the passage of time for one minute, I implemented this using the arch construction function, setting the start and end angles shifted under our clock. The indicator turned out to be interesting, but in Pygame, apparently, there is some kind of bug with the construction of this function, so sometimes empty dots are visible. I didn't stop there either and decided to put the clock in a frame, I made a PNG picture with a cutout for the dial and also took another picture of a much higher resolution. So, having loaded these pictures, 
I made it so that the picture of a higher resolution moved inside the dial, then I defined variables for movement, and in the case when the direction of movement changes, so that the picture is always in the dial, I first placed a large picture on the surface and then a picture with a cutout. And as you can see, as a result, we managed to get a dynamic background under the dial in this way. So do not waste time in vain, subscribe to the channel and all the success, see you soon.